Welcome to part 7 of my mobile automation tutorial utilizing Cucumber and Calabash. Today we will be taking a look at step definitions. So we will see what they are, how they relate to a feature file, we'll go over some of the syntax, how you can capture parameters, and how to avoid ambiguous steps and what they are. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is open up our project in Eclipse. And the last time in the last video we were looking at our feature file. So on our right, we have our entire framework. Right here is our feature file that we wrote. And right here we have a folder called step definitions. So inside of here is um, a predefined one already created for us, and we can go ahead and open this and you want to open with a Ruby source editor. If you don't, it's not going to have any syntax coloring. If you do, you're going to get syntax coloring. Now, you're not going to have this plugin, but it's super easy to get. You can go ahead and just open up Chrome and Google Ruby DLTK for the Dynamic Language Tools Kit. Just click on the link this install button, all you gotta do is drag it and drop it right into here and just follow the prompts. And then you'll be able to open it with the Ruby source editor. Okay, so what is a step definition? A step definition is equivalent to a method or a function in any other object-oriented language, but it's going to be written based off of the steps that you have wrote in the feature file. So a step definition can take in no arguments or as many arguments as you want. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and write the first step definition for the background step I am, I am on my schedule. So what we can do is go ahead and just copy this. And we can use the syntax given. You can replace this whatever you want with the when, a then, an and. And then you're just going to follow this syntax right here. And right here you have created your first step definition. Now what's going on in the inside of here? This is just using um, regular expressions to match this string to the string that you have given in the uh, my schedule. We can go ahead and do the same exact thing for the very next uh, step in our feature file. So we're going to go ahead and grab this step when I tap May 27 on my schedule. Just copy that. We're going to paste it in here. Just as before, how we're leaving the given out, we're going to do the same thing for the when. And we're going to use the same exact syntax as before except this time we're gonna have a money sign at the end and if we were looking at our feature file you can see that when I tap May 27th and when I tap May 29th these are the exact same things and we're gonna to want to not have the two different steps we're just gonna to want to have different variables being passed in so we can go ahead and delete the May 27 portion and we can use this syntax which is just going to catch exactly what we put in there and then we can instead of just saying do and end we can actually say date and here we can print something and we can print the date so puts is just um the same as printing to the command line in any other language. So it would be equivalent to your system.out.print or your console write line. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and save that file. We're going to launch an emulator like we did before. And we are going to navigate into our framework. And we're going to open a command prompt. Just like before, we're going to now execute these tests using bundle execute, calabash, android, run, and the apk name. So 
So here's our first step right here, the background. I am on my schedule. We have wrote the step definition, so it does correlate, but we actually haven't wrote any code for it. Same for the when I tap a certain day. We have put in some code, but all it does is print something right now just to show that it is working. So there you go. You can see that the first uh, day, the first step is in green because the step passed. We didn't actually fail the step. And you can see that it actually printed to the council the day that it was given. And same here for the second uh, test and the third test. So as you can see, green tests that passed are in green. Yellow tests are ones that have not have any step definitions relating to them and I didn't fail any tests or no test failed so we don't have any in red but that would show up in red now we can look down here we have three scenarios every scenario has some undefined portion meaning one of one or more of the steps have not been um, doesn't have a corresponding step definition and you can see if you look at the total number of steps in this run three of them passed because these three steps passed. Now as far as the background goes, that doesn't get included because this is supposed to be done in the background as expected. If this step does fail though, none of these scenarios would actually get ran then. I do want to raise one concern. As you can see, all these steps are already passing and we haven't actually done what it's supposed to do. Now we have to make sure these tests are properly passing because obviously a step that's empty and passing is not okay. Um, so I recommend in between your steps as you're creating them that you put a simple raise statement. So you, all you have to do is write raise. I am still working on this step. Now a raise is just a way to throw an error. So now if we go ahead and save this and we run our test. Okay, and as you can see, after executing our tests, um, they are now failing. You can see that I am still working on this step has been thrown and the step is now in red. And you can look down here and you have failing scenarios. You have all three of them because they all use that step. Okay, the last thing I want to go over is ambiguous steps. So an ambiguous step is when you have two step definitions that look similar. So when you use this um, syntax right here, the dot star, it's catching text in between it. Now, you could be using that to catch wider things and it's not going to know the difference if it should be catching the small part or the large part. So it's important when you're writing your steps in your feature file that you realize that you shouldn't just say then I see the badge pick up. Because when you do something like that if you ever use in a different scenario or a different feature file then I see the and it could be maybe event or it could be social tab it doesn't matter because you left session off you kept a very very um, broad step so when you're writing your feature files you want them to be somewhat unique so that when you do use the catch-all syntax you're not going to be getting ambiguous stuff. So if you would just say, and I tap the date, it's going to catch everything. So anytime you might say, I tap the home button, it's going to catch with that. So we can go ahead and look at this scenario in a second way. We can go ahead and just copy this and write it again. Instead of catching it at the date, we can go ahead and catch it on the My Schedule. And then we can remove this and we can replace this back with what it originally was.
And we can go ahead and save that and we can run it. And as you can see the results say ambiguous match. So it, you can see that these two steps are too similar and then it's saying please fix it or you can turn on the guess mode. I recommend just writing your steps properly and having them well defined and not super broad so that doesn't happen. I ran into this the first time I started using Cucumber when I had um, I wanted to tap a button so I had and I tap the sign out button and then I had that I wanted to tap the um, account button and I noticed that if I would have done it properly I should have said I tapped the account button from the X menu or I tapped the sign out button from the account menu I ended up having a huge list of different buttons and I had to do a bunch of different um, like one super long switch statement for every single button I wanted and it crossed multiple different pages which ended up it worked but it's not the most efficient way and it kind of became a hassle and a nightmare looking back on it. So in the next um, video we will be looking at how do we implement a profiles page or in Cucumber a Cucumber YML because as you can tell um, we have no control over which scenario we want to run right now when we do the Calabash Android run it is just launching all of our tests so in the next video we will go over how we can create profiles and yeah run different tests thanks for watching